Do you like high-level strategy games? Do you like historical games? Do you have an unending thirst for world domination? Well, we've got the game for you. Welcome to Board Game Nation. My name is Gary Blevins. Thank you so much for watching. Today, we're doing an unboxing for one of my favorite games, Axis and Allies 1942 Second Edition. This game has 410 individual pieces, a huge full color map, and lots and lots to talk about. But if this is your first time here, make sure that you take a second, head down, click that subscribe button for so that you never miss a thing. On this channel, we do unboxings, how-tos, and strategy videos, but we also do a traveling show that focuses on your favorite board game stores. So make sure that you click that button and subscribe. All right, let's make it hot. All right, guys, here we go with the Axis and Allies 1942 second edition. Super excited. So I've cheated a little bit with the plastic. Hope you don't mind. I just wanted to uh, watch me fight with that. All right. A nice box here. A couple of notes about the game real quick. It is for uh, two to five players. And that's what we got on the back. It's uh, made by Avalon Hill. The original designer is uh, Larry Harris. And there's about 30 different versions of this game that reenact different battles and different things that are going on in the, during the different kinds of wars. So we had World War I, there's a 1914 version, a couple of different versions of World War II, Battle of the Bulge, Guadalcanal, things of that nature. So, but this is the primary uh, game. This is the, uh, the flagship game at the moment. All right, let's see what we got in here. A vacuum sealed box, which is handy. Okay, nothing on the inside there. Got a rule book. It's not glossy, but it's a, it's a pretty reasonable print quality. We've got a nice table of contents. You're going to need that because this is a fairly detailed rule book. Just to give you an idea of the complexity of the game, this uh, rule book is 31 pages long. So, and you'll have questions when it's over. So, this is the rule book. Now you've got a sheet of uh, roundels or markers or country markers or whatever it is that you want to call them. Obviously these pop out. This is what you'll use to mark territories that you've taken. These are uh, pretty, pretty reasonable uh, punch quality. So uh, we'll get back to the boards, plural, in a second. Uh, you've got individual country cards that are, uh, that pop out. So these, they pop out pretty easily. Uh, this is what you were using for industrial complexes or factories for the war. So you can kind of get a look at those. And this is what the uh, national production is what you start with. We'll have more of these towards the end of the video. And you've got a battle board, which is more of a battle strip, All right? Casualty zone. And uh, we'll talk a lot more about these in the uh, how-to video. Okay, so there's that, and underneath our little protector here, we have the actual pieces. And so uh, there's a lot of miniaturists who love these and will paint these. So uh, I'm not going to open these right now. What I'm going to do is at the uh, towards the end of the video, we'll have uh, close-up shots of each of the uh, of the pieces. So we'll take a look at these in just a in just a little bit. Okay. Also comes with uh, six dice, three red, three black. That's handy. And then it comes with a, uh, a stack of uh, chips to mark your um, the number of units because they can be you can get to where you have a lot of units going on. Okay. So we've got the Germans, the Soviets, the Americans, the British, and the Japanese. That's what's inside the box. So let's set these aside for a moment and take a look at the board. So I'm going to take a second and set all this up for you so that you can get a feel for what it looks like. And uh, it's like magic. And just like that, it's set up. Now, that took about 30 minutes uh, with one person setting it up, and I've done it before. All right, let's take a deep dive and take a look at the game board and how the pieces are set up. Starting with our friends in the Soviet Union, the Russians have got pieces all over Asia. They start with a pretty strong western front, but they're obviously immediately threatened by the Germans. The eastern front has a number of pieces that are spread out, but they're not nearly as threatened immediately by the Japanese as they are by the Germans. 
The Russians have a pretty wide setup and lots of pieces uh, kind of all over the place. The Germans have the most material at the beginning of the game, as you can see by their setup card. They start with a small force in the uh, north of Africa, but the bulk of their forces, of course, are in Europe, and they have lots and lots to go to war with. The United Kingdom, they've got a fair number of pieces, but they are spread out all over the globe. They've got a fair starting force in their home territory, with a little help in the eastern Canadian area. They've got a nice force in India, throughout the Middle East, and one lone guy down there in South Africa. The Australians and the New Zealanders, of course, are in the battle, and they've got a little naval fleet to go with them. And there's one lone guy, of course, standing out in western Canada. As follows the history, Japan, of course, starts with a pretty large naval force in the South Pacific. They've got two aircraft carriers, a number of fighters, a battleship, a cruiser, a submarine. In the North Pacific, they've got another battleship, a couple of destroyers, a couple of transports, and lots of units to get uh, the war started. All in all, the Japanese start with a pretty sizable force and uh, have pretty good dominance over the Pacific. And while the Americans start with most of their heavy hitters pretty far away from the action, they are not to be discounted. The eastern United States features a number of units that can get into the action pretty quickly. The Chinese in this game are actually controlled by the Americans and move on the Americans' turn. And while this is after Pearl Harbor, they still have a sizable force in the Pacific. Moving on, I thought it would be helpful for everyone to see how many pieces of each type come with each country. Now, as promised, here is an up-close view of each of the game pieces by type. I just pulled random pieces out of the box so that everyone can get a feel for the best and the worst of each of the different types of pieces. The designers of the game did the best that they could to try to replicate the different uniforms or tank types or ship types or fighters or bombers for each individual country, which makes for a, a pretty cool uh, game experience.
a quick note about the accessories. You'll notice in the chips that they actually have the Axis and Allies logo in the center, which is pretty cool. But that circle in the center also actually fits the base of the infantry pieces perfectly. All right, Nation, that is Axis and Allies 1942 Second Edition. It is a fantastic game that you can play right out of the box, but there's a couple of accessories that I recommend picking up right away to make your gameplay a little bit easier. First, you'll notice that when we opened the game, it all it came with were the uh, plastic bags that don't reseal. That's fine, but when you go to put the 410 pieces back in the box, it can be kind of a thing. So I highly recommend picking up some small plastic snack bags that you can put all the individual country pieces in. This will make setting up the game much, much easier. So, and it already takes long enough to set up this game. This will make it go a little bit faster for you. So, the other thing you're gonna want is uh, some extra six-sided dice. Uh, it comes with the six-sided dice, which is cool, but you're gonna want more than that because the battles get much bigger than just the six dice. So, just to speed up the, the gameplay, that's gonna be a, a nice tool for you. The other thing that I really love about this, uh, this game is that it's just the beginning of a much larger community. There's a great community of folks out there that play this game, that play all the other variations of Axis and Allies, and even make up variations of their own and have different house rules. And the base mechanic of this game is so strong that they're able to build around it and build a really great gaming world around it, which is cool. So there's also a few tournaments around the country. First, we just had one in uh, Nashville just a couple of weekends ago, and then there's also always a big event at uh, Gen Con. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stop by and check those out. Axis and Allies 1942 Second Edition is available in most board game stores around the country. It's a pretty easy game to get, so if they don't have it in stock, they can order it for you. It retails anywhere from $45 to $60, depending on where you are. Uh, it's a two to five player game that uh, has an average play time of somewhere between five to eight hours. So if you find yourself, I don't know, locked inside for days on end because there's a global pandemic, well, maybe this is the perfect game for you. So uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. If you're interested in learning more about this game, make sure that you click that subscribe button because this is the first in a series of videos that we're gonna be doing about this game. Next up, the how to play. Uh, we're gonna do a detailed deep dive into the 31 page rule book and cover everything that you need to know about this game. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to be worth it because when those videos are done, you'll be ready to, to jump in and play this game with, uh, with the best of them. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.